State Auditor Diana DeZoglio is in the chair. She's our guest this morning. Let's go on the record. She is pushing ahead with her bid to audit the state legislature despite pushback from fellow Democrats, the status of her ballot question, and the political stakes at play. Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR, everyone. I'm Ed Harding, along with News Center 5's political reporter, Charmin Skinny. As you can see at the table with us this morning is the state auditor, Diana DeZoglio. She took office as the state auditor in January of 2023. Democrat, she served both in the state Senate and the House, native of Methuen. She holds a degree from Wellesley College. Great to see you. Thanks for being here this morning. Great to be Happy back as always. Happy middle of February. Chairman. Yes, all right. Well, welcome. Uh, let's start with your push to audit the state legislature. The House Speaker says this is unconstitutional. The Senate President is not on board. You did collect enough signatures to try to get it to the ballot, but the election is nine months away, and the bottom line is, do you think voters will see this question on the ballot? Absolutely. Look, we're working really, really hard to ensure that the question of the auditor's ability to audit the legislature is put before voters at home so that you uh, have the ability to let the legislature know what you think about uh, this issue and whether or not you do want our office to audit the state legislature. As folks know, we've been pushing really hard uh, to make sure that the audit that we are currently conducting of the state legislature is complete. We have not gotten uh, the meetings that we've requested, unfortunately. They refuse to produce documents. Uh, so unfortunately, that audit is looking like it's going to be incomplete. So it's really, really important that we do get this on the ballot. Uh, as the Attorney General has not defended our office, she's actually defended the position of legislative leaders. The ballot question is really uh, the way that we are looking to move forward so now. There's a few more steps that could take place here. One is top Democratic lawmakers could decide if they should pass it, take no action, or they could negotiate an alternative. Do you think any of those are a possibility? Uh, well, uh, you know, having served in the legislature for 10 years, I can tell you that uh, when we would try to push for transparency and accountability, a lot of times leadership would push back on uh, those of us who mm -hmm. were making those pushes for increased transparency. Mm -hmm. uh, if history repeats itself in this case, we're, it's, gonna, it's looking like we're going to need to get another 12,000 plus signatures in the spring. Uh, so we will be in touch. You, you used the word incomplete just a, a, a couple of minutes ago. If, if something is incomplete, then the audit would be ineffective, right? So you need you need completeness, if, if that's a word. That's not a word. But Well, we're going to report on the information that we are able to get. Uh, we do have, uh, you know, the ability to meet with some folks who have met with our office, despite legislative leaders instructing them not to. They've done so anyways, and we're thankful for those folks for coming forward and meeting with us to tell us about some of the challenges. But certainly, Ed, to your point, mm -hmm. uh, you know, voters deserve to be able, taxpayers deserve to be able to get access to what is happening with their tax dollars behind those closed doors on Beacon Hill. Uh, and certainly they deserve a complete audit where we have full access to that transparency and accountability. Next item is the, the, the budget. The administration says that belt tightening is needed because tax revenues continue to come in below what was expected. As the auditor, do you think an audit is needed? An audit of what? Of the state budget. I mean, if they would, you know you've, got, you've got budget shortfalls of, of significant amounts of money. Yeah, so, Incoming. so so we definitely need to see some increased uh, accountability and oversight across the board and state government uh, of this administration as well. Uh, we are currently auditing and getting ready to soon release the results of an audit of uh, the Office of Administration and Finance. Uh, there were some findings there. Uh, we've sent those findings over to the Administration and Finance Secretary. We're waiting to hear back right now is my understanding. Uh, but certainly we are auditing uh, those processes and those procedures, and uh, we'll be releasing the results of that audit do have, shortly. Do you have questions about the projections that were made and how much of a shortfall is there? Yeah, so in our process, uh, we do look at the processes and procedures that are used uh, by those who are responsible for making projections and for uh, discussing matters pertaining to the budget, amongst other things. Uh, so again, we will be looking forward to releasing the results of that audit soon. Uh, and if we need to go back in uh, and conduct another audit or another review, certainly uh, we will be considering all of these factors. All right, I want to get to a big issue. The Healy administration projects the migrant and emergency shelter crisis is on track to cost Massachusetts almost a billion dollars this year. Are you planning to audit how the Healy administration is spending the money uh, to, to on this migrant crisis? We are doing a comprehensive review of housing in general across 
the board and certainly our emergency assistance shelter system is going to be part of that review. That review is actually ongoing. Uh, so during the campaign season long ago at this point now, I've been in office for just a little over a year now, uh, I did commit to auditing uh, housing issues here in the state of Massachusetts. And right now what but we're doing... But that sounds a lot more broad than than the, the emergency shelter crisis, which cost Massachusetts almost not, almost a billion dollars last year and is projected to cost upwards of $900 million this year. I mean, do you have questions about, for instance, state contracts and that sort of thing? We have questions about a lot of things, Charmin, and I think that the emergency assistance shelter system is just one issue in the very big and real crisis that we have on our hands now in the state of Massachusetts and across this nation. So we are looking at the emergency uh, assistance system. We are looking at uh, zoning issues. We are looking at transit-oriented housing. We are looking at state-owned land and how that might be better utilized. We're looking at housing authorities. Uh, there was actually a case that was settled in recent years uh, that will actually that was actually meant to make sure that uh, formerly DHCD now the Department of uh, Housing and Community Living uh, hope I said that the right way the new title for it uh, that they are uh, actually providing uh, increased access and opportunities for folks who need housing in Massachusetts. There have been challenges with folks who uh, might have disabilities, uh, with our senior citizen community who might need help with their applications, for example, with those who have experienced homelessness in Massachusetts. So there is a lot at stake here in Massachusetts. It's going to take all of us working together to address the very real housing crisis. And that is a big aspect of what we are looking at, but it's not the only aspect. We are looking uh, at doing a comprehensive review, and that will be one of the, the several aspects that we the, analyze and report on. The governor's pro budget proposal gives your office a 2% raise. By contrast, the attorney general's office gets a 9% bump. You, you have said you feel shortchanged. It, it, is that how you, I mean, is shortchange strong enough? I mean, are, does that, is, is there a stronger word you'd like to use? That wasn't actually the word that I used. What that was the word use? that uh, a reporter used, which, but, you know, I will say, I certainly feel as uh, though the budget has been uh, uh, less equitable uh, than it could have been. Mm -hmm. And that's been my concern. You know, we understand that there uh, have been budget constraints, and we ha obviously see the projections. We've been paying attention to what's going on. We saw a lot of communities, unfortunately, see cuts down the line to important community programming. A lot of legislators saw cuts. Right. So we certainly, you know, weren't expecting going into well, that do, do you think it's tied to the to the audit pursuit that you're going in, the, the transparency pursuit that you're, you're that you're into? I can say that's a question for the administration to well, answer what, what, as to what's why. What's your opinion? What do you think? My opinion is, look, I'm going to compare this to since it is on the heels of Valentine's Day over here, and we're all in our <laughs> outfits with red, purple, and pink on. I'm going to compare this on the heels of Valentine's Day to a romantic relationship. In a romantic relationship, okay, okay we have what's known as love languages, and some people's love languages are, you know, uh, receiving gifts. Some it's quality time. Some it's words of affirmation or Got physical it. touch. Okay. Well, on Beacon Hill, the budget is a love language. And I will say that we saw a lot less love than we were hoping to see from the administration during their budget process. So, so does, it, does it make you feel handcuffed, honestly? Uh, it, it is unfortunate. It is disappointed. I am disappointed that the administration did not equitably fund our office in comparison with other, other similarly situated constitutional officers. Uh, you know, it is uh, interesting that that's happening at a time when we are, you know, getting ready to release the results of this administration and finance review uh, that we've been conducting. Uh, you know, I, I hope that the, the governor, the administration, and legislative leaders uh, come to understand the great value that our office provides in saving money for the taxpayers. You know, when you invest in the auditor's office, you are investing in helping us combat waste, fraud, and abuse. Our Bureau of Special Investigations last year alone identified over $12 million in waste, fraud, and abuse that results in cost savings for the Commonwealth. We also identified an estimated nearly $85 million in overpayments that went out uh, from taxpayers on behalf of our out of state residents mm -hmm. through our mass health system. We are identifying these areas to save money, which means we are identifying ways to bring that revenue in. Uh, so hopefully the administration comes to see the value in that. Uh, it didn't seem like that was really reflected in the budget proposal, but we are going to continue conversations and advocate for robust funding of the increased, in trans uh, increased transparency and accountability that we bring to Beacon Hill uh, and the cost savings that we provide for taxpayers.